I'm Luana from the University of São Paulo, speaking directly from São Paulo, Brazil. And today we're going to present uh, the work that Jen just uh, spoke the title of. And I'm here ne uh, next to my colleague, Barbara. And OK, so we can get started. Yes. So who do I want to communicate with? And does my work have or should have a social function? Those two questions guided the art production of many artists that were producing en engravings in Brazil, specifically in the middle of the 20th century. And they usually were allied with different currents of Marxist thought. And in, um, many of those artists put together engraving clubs that worked together with the Brazilian Communist Party to illustrate its papers or to raise money for their activities. Uh, the images they created then uh, almost always depicted working class people as a way to try to communicate with them and usually follow two paths in terms of uh, how they represented the, those people. They either aligned with the guidelines of the Soviet Union's guidelines of realist art uh, and or propaganda, which would defend the idea of representing working class people in a heroic and noble way or they use the representation of people as a way to denounce bad working, social and living conditions. So looking into those images then means also looking at different ways in which labor was represented in Brazil during that period. And it shows us that uh, the kind of work that caught the attention of left-wing artists that were producing in Brazil at that period usually have to do with motherhood. And that was the starting point of this ongoing project and in which we focus on social markers of difference such as gender, race, and class to analyze the depiction of women in the work of those artists during that period. So, so far scholars have focused primarily on understanding women's representation by analyzing the context of the artists and their manera. And this study proposes um, proposes to move artists to a secondary level in order to analyze if the representation of women across the engraving clubs and locations in Brazil was already in line with the understanding of mothering as a political category and labor. With that goal, we collected a corpus of 372 engravings that have uh, women depicted on them. Working with engraving has some handicaps, mainly because they are not always um, digitized. So we work with online museum collections, auction houses, online archives, uh, but we also digitize ourselves uh, images from catalogs, exhibition catalogs, and theoretical books. The corpus counts with 57 artists, Brazilian and not Brazilian, but the not Brazilian ones develop a relevant part of their production in Brazil during the decades uh, that this project studies. And we have 46 Brazilian artists and 10 foreign years. And regarding the gender, six, 16 out of the 57 artists are women. Um, but in this project, we are going to present two methodologies. So the first one is the very first one that we created and we started working with that was uh, manual annotation. So with manual annotation, we, and that is why we divided our approaches to understand better iconograph and how visual iconographs, iconographies have developed over time. Uh, the first one is the one that is going to rely in the, as I said, manual annotation. And the second one is going to rely on multimodal networks. So the first part of the study was tagged manually by scholars and professionals related to the topic. And in the second part, we selected a pre-trained model. We did not fine tune it based on our needs because what we wanted to explore is the concept of motherhood that is inherited in these pre-trained models that the people are using, using now. So let's start with the first one. That is the one that we worked uh, before previously to this presentation that was, uh, that was the the original one. Um, so for that, we collected metadata about the artwork. So we have very few metadata, title, date, artist name, country of birth, of birth of the artist, gender. And then we have the task, the, the tags, which is for descriptors. Each, word ha each artwork has like the same number of annotators. And we created out of that a control vocabulary that is the one that we will use in the second part of this project uh, with the other methodology. 
So as you can, as we could see, can see here, outdoors and motherhood are the most repeated tasks, uh, followed by barefoot, sitting, portrait, and indoors. However, the difference between the first and most uh, common tasks and the rest uh, is very significant, meaning that the representation of these two topics is very important for our corpus, it's very significant. Therefore, that is why we decided, like, let's see what, what, what is motherhood and how they are, like, artworks connected to it. So the first thing that we look is the type of work. Is it motherhood considered an, an award, uh, like a type of labor by our by our targets? Is is like depicted at the same time as another job? So we see a big difference about how many of them depicted motherhood uh, who when they are working. So it's kind of happening at the same time. We can see that motherhood is like half of our corpus may well like other types of jobs like landress, farmer, prostitution, cooking and teacher um, are are like in a less in a less part. One of the the things that we covered here was like okay then we consider things such as motherhood or prostitution labor that should we don't consider that should be something different so that's part of like our theoretical framework that we are working with and the other interesting part with the manual annotations was to see the co-occurrence so when appears the tag uh, motherhood what are the other things that happen at the same time so the co-occurrence of motherhood with outdoor is very relevant in our opinion because it goes against the stereotypical association between motherhood and the domestic and the, dom the domestic private sphere. Also, another aspect that we like to highlight is the fact that other types of work appear in this list, like landress or farmers. This shows that those women were engaged in at least double workload as they are performing more than one job. And that is not something, and the interesting part is that this is not something that women does, it's how they are depicted in a solo picture. So they are depicted doing more than one job at the same time. A clear example of this is the work carries everything in the world. That is the one that you can see here, that is by Livio Abramo. And the visual global imaginary of motherhood was clear to the annotators. However, our next question is to understand how it is currently being shaped or, or how it is has been shaped up until now. Last year, generative models because uh, they were extremely popular during, like in academia, abroad, everyone was talking about them. And the creation of new images or texts and all these generative uh, artificial intelligence and algorithms were like taking over most of our our scholar our scholar uh, discussions. So we decided to see. Okay, thinking about our projects and how this image and test generators decided to perpetuate and specific specific concepts and iconographies, we decided to compare the results of the annotation that we have by experts with the results uh, created by neural networks. So what would happen if like we manually, we automatically tag these images and what is considered, what is like the iconographies that are being inherited in these models? So the second part of the project, Focus uh, uses multimodal networks. So multimodal networks are networks that connect different types of data. In our case, it's text and images. In this case, we not only use a multimodal network, but also a neural network. Neural networks use different bits of connections, similar to neurons. In and what they do is like in a layer structure, they create a deeper and more complex understanding of the information and their connections. With these characteristics, we decided to use CLIP, the model developed by OpenAI. CLIP, um, which stands for Contrastive Language Image Pretrain, connects large language models with images. So this algorithm is open and which was helped and, and was helped by the community to improve and experiment with it, which that is why we use it. And this made the algorithm super interesting to study uh, because you can see the different models and how the community improve it or adding different knowledge to that, different layers of knowledge. So for this project, we didn't we didn't want it to fine tune one, which means like we didn't want it to train one based on our data to get better results. What we wanted to see is that if we give our data, 
with no information except the image and no titles. Uh, what is what is the algorithm going to find? How is going to tag? And how we can compare that with the manual tag made by made by 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 humans and see how that changed. We also use CIFAR 100, which is a pre annotated data set to get more information. And after several attempts, we adopted to narrow our selection of tags from our control vocabulary based on previous analysis. And this decision stems from the observation that certain concepts previously chosen were not adequately interpreted by the model. Uh, that we were applying, so we have to narrow down to um, a small, like to a, a list of like shorter concepts. Um, so, if we analyze the mean of the possibility distribution of the five selected tasks, we can see a notorious difference from the previous analysis. Interestingly, despite the tasks, farmer and work being relatively low in the manual analysis that we saw before, they are prominent alongside motherhood in this distribution. Notably, motherhood, which was previously ranked the second one, now holds the third position. And this prompts the, at the next hypothesis, that is, do human annotators possess a broader visual understanding of representations related to motherhood? And to better understand this, this we decided to dissect the results and go from global to local cases. Okay, so uh, talking a little bit about the local uh, cases that we analyze, uh, first of all, uh, what we wanted to understand is what would be the images that were most aligned, aligned to the algorithms and understanding of motherhood. So we looked into the three artworks which showed the highest level of connection to the word motherhood. Barbara, can you? Yeah, <laughs> and this is what we found. So this is what motherhood looks like for open AI based on our corpus. Uh, and looking into what those images have in common, uh, it caught our attention that all these artworks show a person sitting with a child on their laps. And also the act of embracing is really evident in all three. And also beyond that, they were all made by the same artist, which is the Polish Brazilian Faiga Ostrawet. And Faiga uh, devoted some time of her overall trajectory creating images of motherhood, especially after she had her first child in 49. And in some interviews, she, she made it very evident that she recognized herself in the stereotypical image as the, the loving and devoted mother. So it's very significant that hers are the works that score the highest in our project. Uh, however, the second image in, in this slide, as you can see, is not an, a motherhood image. It, uh, based on the year that it, this image and the, the one before it, the first and the second, uh, were made, and the titles, we can relate them to a period when the Faiga used to go up to slums in Rio de Janeiro to draw people. Uh, and it's important to highlight the second image uh, that it has the title Kids from the Hill, translated to English uh, in Portuguese as Garotos do Morro. Uh, which points to the understanding that these kids aren't mother and daughter, like the other two images, but probably siblings of different ages, one looking after the other. Uh, besides that, it was very interesting to us that the algorithm could read and capture images created in uh, three different techniques, uh, in this case, woodcut, etching, and linocut, and could even capture motherhood in the third work, which doesn't uh, necessarily have the figures so well defined and where we can also see a deeper experimentation within the possibilities of linocut. And two other interesting cases for us were these two other artworks, both by Brazilian artist Dijanita. The screen print one on the left got the fourth highest score in regards to motherhood, which was 0 0.98. And the woodcut work, which is clearly related to the colored one, uh, also received a high score of 0 0.8. Uh, they both portray Santana and v Virgin Mary, her daughter, but they, they are different. There's a difference between those two images. Uh, if we compare them to the first ones that we saw uh, that were mostly related to, to motherhood because the, the kids in this case aren't sitting on the, the adult's lap. Uh, They're by their side and reading. Uh, however, one thing that we noticed is that the one that got the highest score between both of Jijanita's works has a relevant difference, which is the fact that uh, it has a golden, both of the figures have golden halos around their heads, 
which is a char characteristic of the depiction of saints. So our hypothesis here around the fact that the first image got a higher score is precisely because it can more easily be related to an European Catholic iconography. Uh, moving on to a different case, in these two other cases, motherhood was hardly captured by the AI. So the woodcut in green by Corbinia Nolins shows a woman holding a young boy's hand while she's walking forward, balancing a bowl of water on her head. And, and the depiction of women who worked as laundresses next to their children is very common in the artworks from this period and other artworks, uh, which leads us to believe that this is indeed an image that is related to motherhood. It would be a laundress that is uh, working as a laundress uh, also next to her child. However, it scored 0 0.0064, so very, very low. And in the example of Cangido Portunari's work on, on the right, which is literally called Mothers and Daughters, uh, the score for motherhood was 0 0.23, which is higher than the other one, but still low. And however, it was striking to see how high the score was in regards to the word farmer. So in this work by Fortunati that is called Mothers and Daughters, uh, AI established a score of 0 0.68 for farmer and 0 0.23 for motherhood. And we're wondering why would that be? And uh, we, we, are, we have been asking some questions uh, about this result such as, uh, is, this the, is, re, is this result related to the fact that the people portrayed in this work by Porcinari have Afro curly hair? Is it because the woman is barefoot? Um, so this is a very relevant case for our project and we are very interested in better understanding questions like this in the future and better analyzing other examples of uh, work related. And finally, two other very interesting cases that caught our attention were these two woodcuts. So the one on the left called Grupo do Mangue is from a series of artworks created by Lazar Segal in which he depicted prostitutes in a specific region of Rio de Janeiro. It shows a group of people, mainly women, sitting down, looking forward, dressed in see-through clothes that make it possible for people to see their breasts. So this image got a very high score in relation to the word motherhood, which was 0 0.89. And we believe that this was the case because the breasts are visible and also because of how the women are positioned in relation to each other. Um, because since we saw for that for AI motherhood is a woman sitting down with a child on her lap. And the other case we'd like to talk about specifically is the work teacher, Professora uh, in the right by Isa Aderni. Uh, as you can see, the image shows a woman sitting in front of two kids. In the background, uh, we can see a chalkboard which says in English, there will be no school tomorrow. So it's a clear depiction of a classroom. Uh, and in this case, the score for motherhood was also high, being 0 0.72, whereas the score for the word work was 0 0.15. So it caught our attention that the AI would relate such an important job as teaching children uh, to motherhood much more than it did to actual work. So this means that it believes teaching is closer to motherhood than it is to labor. And finally, uh, this exploratory study has led us to very interesting preliminary conclusions that we want to investigate further. First of all, uh, since our main goal is understanding how motherhood had been pictured and represented in our corpus, uh, we saw how the AI interpretation of those images show us iconographies that reveal part of the global imagery uh, about uh, around motherhood. So in that regard, one of our preliminary conclusions is that human beings are able to identify the tag motherhood in a wider range of images. However, algorithms such as CLIP find motherhood in a very narrow iconography, uh, which can uh, be reduced to people with children on their lap. And this leads us to our second conclusion, which is that algorithms are perpetuating specific iconographies when it comes to classifications or tagging. It is perpetuating the view of a, of a mother as a white caring mother, uh, as a white caring woman embracing a child on her lap, as we are able to notice in the artworks with the higher marks. And it almost identifies motherhood as the Madonna or a Catholic virgin biasing the concept of motherhood to a very specific type of scene. Uh, also the classification of images depicting racialized mothers that puts them closer to working scenarios than to motherhood 
uh, really caught our attention. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm almost there. Um, and points to a possible racist and or classist bias behind the AI's analysis, which must be further investigated by us. And finally, the last conclusion we took from the work is the correlation between work and motherhood is unclear to AI tagging being another thing that we want to continue exploring. So we are interested in understanding when mothering is considered a job and also how it is represented with other types of labor, such as laundress and pharma. And that is it. That's we, what we have prepared. I'm sorry we stepped a little bit uh, out of time. And thank you much, very much for the attention.